And as soon as you try to relax, you put things down. They're like, here we go, people. Let's go, let's go. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's like, where's your passport? I'm like, ah, what's a passport? I just, it was a mess. It was a mess. So if you're traveling to South Korea and you have questions about customs, what it's gonna look like, this is a good video to watch. I already made a video that talks about the PCR test process and what I would really recommend you do so that you don't end up almost stuck in Germany like I did. So I would definitely give that a watch after this, but this I'm gonna solely focus on customs in Korea, what it looked like to get off the plane and then get into my quarantine facility. And yes, I see it, okay? I was saving it for a little yummy snack for later. Now let's just pretend that she's not there and we'll keep going. So when you are on your flight that is about to, or eventually will land in Korea, you'll be given four pieces of paper that you need to fill out on the airplane before you actually arrive in Korea. First up is the health declaration form. The main focus of this form is, are you already showing signs of Rona or not? And I hope the answer is no, so we can just check no symptoms on this. And then we got the travel record declaration form. Both of these will ask, where have you been in the last 14 to 21 days? If you had a layover in another country, that counts, so make sure you list it. Next is the traveler declaration form. Unless you went on like a $600 plus shopping spree on one of your connecting flights, you're safe just to check no on all of these. And then finally, the arrival card. The address is going to be the first place that you're going to be staying here in Korea and a contact number associated with that address. Now, for those of you who might be like me, who were thinking the first place I'm staying is a government quarantine facility, so I don't know what the address is, so I'll just leave it blank. No, 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 no. Let me explain to you what happened to me. Well, we get in a line and the cute little ajima, like cute little old grandma, who spoke really good English, by the way, was like, no, 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 you need to have an address. Like, where, where will you go after quarantine? And I was like, an Airbnb. That I hadn't booked yet because I didn't know if we were staying 13 nights or 14 nights. By the way, it's 14 nights. She said, okay, write the Airbnb down, put their phone number as well. And I was like, yes, ma'am. In the back of my head, I was saying, I don't have an Airbnb just yet, but I can, I mean, I guess I'll do that right now. And it's actually very important that you do not forge this or you just make something up because in the next section, after you show them all the piece of papers that you filled out, they take your temperature and then they point you, they actually don't really point, just read signs. And then they tell you to go to the foreigner customs area. And at the next spot, there's gonna be all these guys behind these little booths, they're two at a time. And they're going to check the address and phone number that you wrote down on all of your paperwork. And they're actually going to call that number and confirm that this is where you're staying for quarantine or after quarantine. If you're like me and one of the first places you were planning to stay was an Airbnb, in advance, I would book that Airbnb, talk to them and let them know, like, can I have your phone number? Because if that's not okay, you need to find one that is okay with like receiving that call. And I would definitely let them know when you're in line or when you land, hey, connect to the Wi-Fi right away. Hey, you should be getting a call pretty soon within the next hour or so. And they're just gonna confirm that I'm just, you know, a vacationer. And they're gonna ask you to see your visa. Don't freak out, we're just here on vacation. So that doesn't, you don't need a visa. You just say, oh, I'm here on vacation. And they'll say, okay, okay. They basically stamp you the approval and then they give you this yellow card to show that you went to the table and you've been approved. And then you'll start walking towards the next part of customs. They'll want to see your yellow card to make sure that you actually didn't just like skip the line. And then they'll direct you once their little fancy glass doors open. This is where you'll speak with the immigration officer. Does anyone know what these people are called? I always thought they had cool jobs, but they always seem like they hate their lives in every country. So anyway, she will take your COVID test. None of the airports or my other departures took my test, but she took my COVID test. Uh, asked why I was staying and since it was just vacation, it was pretty easy. And then she told the lady that I'm going to a government facility and they directed me into like a separate room. And my friend and I had to go speak, get our fingerprints done, get our picture taken. And they're like, you do know that you have to go spend two weeks in quarantine and you gotta spend the big bucks, is that okay? And, like, mm -hmm. and then they literally said, okay, come this way, thank you. And they let us out this door and then they closed the door and the, the lady walked away. I thought she was gonna direct us somewhere. She closed us out the door. She said, bye, but we don't know where to go. Literally had no idea where I was. They actually don't really point, just read signs. They actually don't really point. And after aimlessly walking around, we realized we had to go down an escalator and go to baggage claim to find our bags. We got our bags. We walked to where you claim something and we gave them our pieces of paper that say if we're claiming anything and we weren't claiming anything. So she just said, okay, like, 
and go. And so you don't have to get your bag scanned or any of that. Don't get scared if you're not claiming anything. And then the doors open. Two guys are sitting again in those little glass booths. He asks to see your passport. You basically just get it okay for another guy. He's like, go sit down. So you'll sit down and you'll wait. And I thought this is where we wait for like other foreigners to like accumulate so we can take a bus to the quarantine facil facility. What a word. But there was only like three of us and he was like, let's go people. I just put all my stuff down. So I'm like, oh yeah, okay, yeah. Where are we going? And we get to the far corner of the airport. You have to wait in this area. Once there's enough foreigners, then they'll go get a bus to take you guys to a facility. We got on the bus. Waited for almost another hour, just sitting on the bus. No idea why. Again, not really much communication. Just know that you'll probably sit and wait. Drive to the hotel, sit, and we waited for like only like 10 minutes in the bus. Then we got off the bus, we went inside, we had to fill out some like now quarantine facility paperwork. They make you delete the app that you spent such a long time in customs trying to figure out and set up. They make you delete that app and then re-download the app that you'll use to like self-report in a government facility. At this point, you have to have a Korean phone number. It can be a friend or it can be your own, but you must have a Korean phone number. Thankfully, I just so happen to know one person that is Korean and lives in Korea. They do not call this person unless there is a reason to call this person. Whereas like with your Airbnb, they will call with the friend contact. It's just like if they need to call someone. You have to have a number either way. Once you're done with this, they'll assign you your room. They'll ask about how you're gonna pay the whole, you know, grand and a half that you're gonna have to pay. Then the next guy's gonna ask you about if you have any food allergies. This is the opportunity for you to say if you want one of the following. I did not know these were options, by the way, but it says there are four choices, Korean, Western, vegetarian, and halal. Hala? It's hello. hello. Oh boy. These are the four options that you have. And once you say this, you cannot change it in the future. I picked vegetarian just because I wanted to love my body well and kind of give it a chance to cleanse itself because I don't usually eat the healthiest and I'm not gonna be able to move and stay as active as I usually am. So I just wanted to try to take a healthier route. I've done like a whole room tour and I showed like all of the food that I brought myself so that if I am really hungry, I can eat that. And if you wanna watch that vlog, I'm sure it'll be attached somewhere up here. Don't be stressed about it. They're not gonna deport you. And if they do, that means that you probably actually did you're like a felon or you really did mess up and you lied about something. But I'm gonna keep making videos, just answering questions about Korean quarantine, what the flight process was like, PCR tests, all that good jazz. Leave any questions, I'll make a video on it if you want me to. And other than that, have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.